Well, hello there. Welcome to the Heat Army podcast. Um, we'll join you on the back of a, a decent result at the weekend. Um, the game was put back, of course, two hours to, because of uh, the, the, the adverse weather, but um, it seemed to be the right decision to do. The weather cleared up, the snow left, and Gates had got the game underway, which um, hopefully everyone watched and enjoyed. But um, if you didn't watch it, we've got a couple of the key moments to share with you later on throughout the show. And also as well, we're going to be speaking to the son of former Gator manager, um, Graham Lee. Uh, of course, Tony Lee, his dad, who had two stints at Gator. So we're going to be speaking to him um, about his dad and uh, sharing some memories. And also as well, you may have seen uh, that Gator have announced uh, two new strips, uh, well, to pick from, either home or away, as uh, vote. So hopefully we'll find out about that we've got the pictures to show you as well and also the, the the news as well of the league um they've contacted all of the league clubs um the, i think the league itself had a meeting and they've give um three options for the clubs to um put f- their thoughts forward on one being uh that the clubs take out a loan because the grants are not going to be um forthcoming anymore for the clubs to help survive and pay the wages the second option as well is for the league to take out the loan and we'll go into depth more later on that, but the the, the league has minimal sponsorship really and not much TV money. Or the third option is for the clubs to decide whether they go and uh, end the season now. So a lot to talk about. Uh, Mickey, um, we'll start at the top. Um, say, uh, <laughs> good result on Saturday. Oh, hi. Uh... Uh, I was dancing around the living room with Macaulay Longstaff put that goal in. Uh, yeah, it, was, it was a great finish. Oh, oh good thing. Absolutely fantastic ball in by Carl Griffiths as well. Um, I've, it was it looked as if it was just one, can't be one of them frustrating games. Yeah. Uh, we just couldn't get that goal, but fortunately we did. And Like I say, what a ball over by... Callum Griffiths, I thought Preston might have slid in and, and he obviously couldn't reach it and Macaulay's finished it at the back post. Oh, Absolutely yeah. amazing. Well, and of course, the triple save from James Montgomery as well, but we'll go into that a lot later. We have got our first guest lined up and um, it is uh, Graham Lee, son of Tony Lee, but we have got a little highlight package uh, to introduce Graham. So uh, this is him doing what he did uh, back in the day. Concentration, lose half a yard on your man, and you're dead and buried. Thornton's delivery again. Phillips all about Cully. It's in. Graham Lee, the captain, has put Doncaster Rovers back in front. And can Bristol come back from this one? Well, what did I just say? You lose concentration, you lose your man, you're dead and buried. Oh, they're dead and buried. We'll have to wait and see. Good delivery again. From Thornton. Just half a yard on his man. Good downward header. He does well as well here. Good battle. Does everything right. Heads it back to where it's come from. Just goes over the defender. Good header. No chance for Phillips. Can they hang on to it this time? Oh, you weren't bad back in the day, were you, Green? <laughs> I could end the ball. Yeah, uh, <laughs> fond memories after you. Really it's fond nice memories. It's nice to see he hasn't aged. Yeah, I have a little I bit. I've got good grip. lighting. <laughs> uh, I've got a good lighting in here. That's all it is. <laughs> uh, Graham, thank you very much for joining us. Um, oh, thanks for having me. As I say, we we we've seen the news um, that your dad was obviously battling um, is it dementia, or Alzheimer's, or was it or was it the same yeah. thing? Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you to say it's a, obviously sad news, um, and um, we're seeing more and more of uh, older footballers, um, you know, having this. And um, I, I mean, I don't know. Has it has it been linked to uh, his playing days? Uh, nothing's been. I don't think anything's been highlighted or looked into. But if you look at all the research, what's going on at the moment, there's every chance he tells me stories. Obviously, the balls in them days, what he used to play, but he continue to head the ball off the wall as a kid and then going into games he was quite strong in the air so it does tie in and that's a worry it's a worry for many many footballers especially getting said is but even even myself I look back and my my game was about was dominating in the air heading a lot of balls so I've done that throughout my life and then you look at my dad and you think hopefully some more research will get put forward and look at what is going on 
I certainly hope so. But um, so we, we want to obviously speak about uh, your dad because he was. I mean, I I met him in his second spell. Um, travelled on the team bus because at the time uh, the fans did travel on the team bus, and uh, yeah. you, you know yourself, your dad could talk and tell a story. Um, it was, yeah. it, obviously. He would have been younger when he started his management. I mean, I remember him being at Bishop Auckland and um, say it was a proper football ground. That wasn't a thing. It was, yeah, yeah, it was. My brother played as well for me that way. He was at uh, Bishop Auckland. But yeah, as, as a kid, I grew up following, watching my dad's team. So as a young lad, I think Whitby was uh, one of the, my first memories of going to watch them for many years. And then he moved on to Billingham Symphony. And I think his first in from Billingham Symphony was Gator. And I remember as a young lad going up and, uh, and watching him train on the Astrid Safe out at the back and watching the games. And he he loved that. He really, I think it was it's a good opportunity for him at Gator and he was really looking forward to it. I, I think and he, I, I, speak to, I remember him speaking a few years ago about it. Uh, and he was just, how he said, like he had a plan when he went there to, to keep them up. And he mm. said it, uh, and he, he laid out his plan that the next season was to go mid table and then hopefully push on from there. And I think if you look at, we looked at the season when he did actually leave the finish mid table, his plan was in place, but he didn't get the time to to yeah. put it in place. Oh, it was a bit so he, sad. He, yeah. Sorry. No, no, Mickey, Mickey sent me a picture today that he got from a, a Whitby fan scene. Uh, we've got that one yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. That's him. He's, Whitby have done been fantastic. They've, they've brought, brought out a, a little booklet and they, they've really brought some good stories together. And <clears throat> they're selling uh, them pamphlets for about £3 a, a goat, and which is going towards dementia. And I think through my brother and friends and my family, my dad, they've sold hundreds. It's been fantastic and it's it's brilliant. My dad he carries one round with him and he, he reads it and he, he's as much as at the moment it's you know, if you met my dad now you'd think it's not the same man in the sense of how he is. Mm-hmm. His confidence is he, I think he's at a stage where he do not say much because he he keeps getting drunk and so he gets a bit frustrated, but he ta- he's still taught football. He'll still want to talk about his old players, but he just gets obviously mixed up with the years and the people and different things. But he's well, he's still he's still a massive. His whole life is still football, even though he's probably forgot more than most of us know. So. Well, we mentioned last week that obviously he, he was you know one of the the brains of Northeast non-league football. He knew every player and what level yeah. they were at, and where they could play. I mean, we mentioned he brought in Steve Salvin, the Gator, who nobody had heard of. And he was, yeah. you know, instrumental in in the promotion season. Obviously, after uh, your dad left, but you know, he brought in some fantastic players. And um, yeah, I remember what a <laughs> Gary Brabham. He brought Gary Brabham in. He went on to have a fantastic career. But he uh, he stayed at our house, Gary. And I remember Gary coming in the house the first time we've ever met this lad, this scout lad. He came up. He put his he put his uh, bags in the room upstairs, and we were just sat downstairs. And he, he came home and he ran in the front room with a balaclava. On. And he came, he came in screaming, and we were all we all jumped out. I was kidding, like, who's this? I'm like 14 year old, thinking, who's this? Like, and then he just came up, to, and that was the character Gary. But my dad loved that. He loved the banter. He loved the characters, and he, he could bring. But he was every every ex player I speak to, the the talk about how, how my dad made them feel. It was his man management. I think he made them feel like they could run through a brick wall. They could play at the top level. They could. And they always say, like, as much as that's what he was. And you speak about on the bus. I spoke, I mentioned your story to him when he was going, when you have to say on the bus, you have to be, the, like, and that, that's why he was. And that's yeah. why he was a he was a character. And it is, it is at the moment, it's very difficult seeing your dad now at the moment where he's quite withdrawn, he's very quiet. But every now and then you'll get a little glimpse and, and you've got to hold on to that. But it's, he was, he's a football mad, but he's a people person, the character, and he's had a hell of a uh, non-league career. Certainly has. Before we started the podcast, I used to do a, a blog and I used to do uh, match reports. And um, at the time, I think it was Jamie Clark who had signed a striker. Um, I, I did a match report and I wrote, um, I give him, I think there's six out of 10 and wrote the ball was not his friend. And now uh, your dad was reading it out loud on the bus, and Jamie Brilliant. Clark was practically in tears next to us. 
Yeah, that's <laughs> right, right, yeah. That one. That's brilliant. Yeah, I'll tell him that one. Yeah, he like that. Yeah. yeah. And I'll, Mickey, I'll just just it, it, uh, I mean, I was reading that Whitby uh, fanzine today, and yeah. I don't know if you read about the Jeff Winter story. Yeah, with my right. mum. <laughs> yeah, your mum was hitting, trying yeah. to hit him with a handbag. Yeah, I yeah, they were a bad combination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been, there's been, there's been more of them stories. I think Fisher Barthman, the uh, Goffy Pog off on his radio show, and he gave my mum the hero of the week because my dad got sent, my dad got sent off, and he refused to leave the dugout. <laughs> so my my mum had to walk out the stand all the way around and drag him off. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh. yeah, so, yeah, so it's it, there's been some over the time, there's been some fantastic memories and things, but the I mean, I, through my dad and story, and it's brilliant listening to different people like the two stories you told me about the gated times. I listen to that, and it, it's fantastic. Well, we've got a message um, from Adri, he's put your story and your dad's story is so moving. I can't imagine how difficult it is for your family going through this uh, tremendous change. Uh, we all love football, and uh, the story is so humbling. Well, it, it is, but as I say, we, that's why we want to speak here because obviously we want to sh- share good times and uh, show them that that obviously um, your dad was very well respected and loved it. Gate said, and I wasn't around for the first time, but Mickey, you said he was unfortunate to to uh, leave the first time. He was unfortunate um, when he come in. You know, he brought a lot of lads from Billings, like say, Phil Lineker, Neil Granick, and Charlie Butler, all them lads. And they were building a good side. And then, yeah. like you say, the next season, his aim was to get further up the tail, but he wasn't given the chance, and I thought it was unjust uh, what a certain chairman done to him. Uh, yeah. But what a man. When he crossed the white line, he, he turned in. You could see him having to go at the referees and lines. And oh, God, off the yeah. pitch. He was yeah. such a nice man. What a lovely he guy. Does. And I've... <laughs> I, I remember uh, in his last wow. season, we were away at Fleetwood, and I think Tony Carter might be uh, able to tell the story a bit better later on. But um, we were, I think we were losing at half time, <laughs> and someone said to your dad, I, I, just, you know, I can't remember, it's like, you know, you know what's going to happen in the second half? I think the more he was more worried is he goes, what's a chef word score? Because <laughs> you're a chef. <laughs> He yeah, probably, I, had, he probably had it on his predictor when he used to sell on yeah, the team. Yeah, there's every chance that as well, yeah. Uh, yeah, he was always there. Uh, yeah, he'd always make the call after my games, but he was always, like you said, when he got in the touchline, I think the refs were a bit fearful because his game was ref, ref, ref. <laughs> but he yeah. failed for everything. He just, he just wanted to win games and he wanted the lads to win for the lads as much as anything else. And, and that's why he was. He was never a manager who, he went in for money or got lots of money to spend. He just went in because he loved the game and he loved bringing players on and trying to get best out of players. Yeah. And um, I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll let you go there, Mickey. Go on. I mean, look at the side he had a Bishop Auckland. Was it Danny Mellonby and oh, Brunskill? Yeah, yeah, Mickey Nelson. Yeah. Mickey Nelson. So, I mean, he had some bloody good players and who went on. Jeff, a, Jeff Smith as well. Uh, Jeff Smith. Uh, Jeff Smith. Yeah, to Bolton. Yeah. So um, that's just four you can name off the top of your head, you know. Yeah, I, think, is... I think my brother mentioned uh, Sportrum today and he, cause he, he remembers a bit more than me. He said, I think he signed for, uh, on loan Keith Scott when he was at Gated and then he yeah. went on the next year or so for 500,000 to Norwich or somewhere. like. So he, he always had a good eye for players. He could try play and he and try and bring him into the team and then... Like you said, some of the lads have moved on and had fantastic careers in the game. Yeah, and did you, you never you, never get a phone call, Graham, to come to Gated? He mentioned a few times, but no. <laughs> but uh, I kept no, I've really had a, I, with him. No, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no, he was uh, my, I, I was I asked my brother because I couldn't remember today if my brother played, but it, at the time he wasn't. He was too young and he was elsewhere at the time. But I wasn't sure if he'd actually played. I. He'd retired after when we, on his second stint. I think that's what it was. Yeah, because he's. I, I kept saying to him, "Why are you going to bring your Graham?" And he just used to laugh and smile and say, "We're kind of afford him." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Graham, I would have been honestly. I would have at one point. I'd have loved to be able to play for my dad. I, I, when I sort of like retired, I ended up going and playing for Celtic Nations. Uh, 
for a season or two. My dad came in with us for a little bit, so it was nice to just have that little work together a little bit. Uh, yeah. But I didn't play much. I was more stood in the touch, touch line with him and um, working with him that way. But it's it is it's he's a football man, and I've learned I learned a lot every game. I run do the under twenty threes in middle now, but. He'll come up most of my game, all my games and he'll always have a comment or tell me what I should be working on with the lads and have a little... And he, you've got to take his advice. Well, as so I say... Sorry, David. I'm, I'm so, when, you, yeah. when you've worked with um, Ainsley Pears and uh, Brad James as well? Ainsley Pears, Brad James, Nathan Dale, Dan Ward, uh, yeah. and M- Montgomery had just moved on before I, I came into Middlesbrough. Oh, so fantastic. there's a few of your boys there, yeah. Yeah, so uh, say with pairs especially. Uh, he was, uh, was, uh, was an yeah. excellent season for us, as was Brad James. And, yeah, uh, was doing well. Yeah, he's at older shot now, isn't he? He's on the old shot, I think. I'm yeah. not sure he's there, uh, but he's still like he's only on loan, so he'll be coming back at some point. But he's a good yeah, lad. Nice All good lads. As well. Yeah, fantastic yeah. lads. Yeah, even the two boys you got now with Nathan Dale and Dan Ward, they're fantastic lads and great attitudes on them both. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice to hear, but uh, I mean, I told you the story about my daughter, didn't I? Yeah, that's still a brilliant story. I've after told him. The gated manager. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> when you said Tony Lee, I was thinking, no, good that. <laughs> yeah, he's a good man. He had a good stint in it. No, I'm on about a name. That was brilliant. <laughs> Honest, my ex girlfriend looked at me as if I'd just shit on the carpet. <laughs> uh, he has he, every. I've had a. I've got a boy and a girl. He's tried each time with a name Tony. Oh, why didn't he call him Tony? And then the girl call him Tony. Uh, but he didn't get his way. So, oh, well, uh, you, I'm glad he's got it with yourself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he was. He was buzzing when I told him, mind, because he didn't have any yeah. grandchildren at the time. He said. No, I didn't. See one of the, yeah, it wasn't until well a couple of years later. Um, my brother love it, had the first, and then we've got two now. So uh, you see, and I keep, I keep trying to encourage them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. yeah, he always wanted. He was desperate for, and especially I've a little boy. He's just so he just wants to get like even now he's like, oh, uh, when I get when I get a chance, I'll take him out on the grass and we'll do a bit of football with him. I'm like, yeah, yeah, of course, but yeah. So it's, yeah. oh, he great. just wants he just wants to keep teaching and helping and doing football. Yeah, oh, well, that's fantastic. Well, Graham, thank you very much for joining us. Um, uh, I appreciate you having me. Really do. Just to to your dad from us, and uh, we're will all do. thinking. I will do. I mean, yeah. yeah, give him a massive well, cuddle thanks. from us. I will do, and thanks very much, everyone, and good luck to everyone. Right, cheers. Thank you. Well, cheers. You take care, Bye-bye. Graham, and all the best. Any Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. There we go. That was Graham Lee there. Uh, fantastic to chat to him. Um, as you see, he was one of them players I always thought might have turned up at Gateshead uh, later on in his career. Um, it would have been... I kept Tony for it. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. And also, obviously, the link that he's been working with some of the um, the uh, Gateshead players uh, that we've got now, you know, when they've been in the Middlesbrough set up because they've, um, well, they've, they've had... Uh, some fantastic players come through the ranks, haven't they? We've had lots of messages come in, so um, we'll get these out. Uh, when's the Kints announced? Um, don't know yet. Uh, David Ray has put uh, everything is going against us in terms of league, COVID, weather, no fans, other teams, cup runs, etc. Mason Ford's put evening, uh, lads. Well, thank you for joining us. Also, as well, we've got evening, lads. Great uh, one nil win. Uh, for uh, for Geisley, <laughs> should be against Geisley. I think Jacob Blythe will be a good addition alongside the two South Shields players. Uh, Blythe is a good striker, and I believe uh, uh, he's played in the football league, so he'll be a good addition to the squad. He certainly will. I mean, hopefully we'll we'll, we'll see more of him. Well, see him because he didn't get to play um, for that. And um, obviously, yeah, David Ray's put thanks Graham there. So, oh, what a nice chat with Graham. We're going to quickly, quickly play a message from our sponsors. And when we come back, we're going to have Tony Carter ringing us in about 10 minutes. But before that, we'll chat about the game on Saturday. So, um, this is just a message from our sponsors. And uh, well, we are going to make a better advert for this. It's just at the moment, we haven't been able to. But our sponsors, Northern Print Solutions, we thank them as ever.
Well, there we go. Our sponsors, Northern Print Solutions. Uh, remember, you can message the show. Do it as uh, people have been doing. Just message on this video link, and it will appear. And if you are listening on the um, the audio podcast, because we know people still listen to the audio podcast, um, thank you very much. And um, we know some people don't get to watch us live and just prefer their podcasts audio. So, uh, big thank you to the people that are still listening on there. Um, it's all very much appreciated. Now, Saturday, um, we played Geisley, and um, it was a, a very fast and frenetic game in the first half. Second half, a little bit change of dynamic, but uh, Gator kept plugging away and got their goal at the end, and this is the winning goal from Macaulay Langstaff. Greenfield, if he looks up, finds Devidix. Devidix gets the ball to Callum Griffiths, who gets past his man, crosses the ball in, it's a good one, and in comes there Macaulay is. Langstaff! At the back post, and Gateshead have took the lead in injury time. Unbelievable play from Colin Griffiths, by the way. A lovely touch, lovely uh, cross. I mean, that's an unbelievable ball far post. Uh, I thought Preston was going to tap it in the middle, but credit to Macaulay Langstaff. Good finish back post. Um, I think Gateshead deserve it. Just about deserve to win this game. Um... Well, that was the winning goal, and um, so it was a change of formation, and of course, we haven't really mentioned as well uh, the two South Shields players in Dylan Morse and in Blair Adams that came in and both slotted in very well. Um, on the commentary we gave, well, we weren't we, we weren't asked. Uh, normally, we were asked to pick a man in the match. We picked uh, Danny Greenfield, but there was a few players stood out, but of course, Dylan Morse uh, come in, centre of defence, helped keep a clean sheet, and uh, Blair Adams was instrumental in a lot of attacks uh, down the left-hand side. But um, look, haven't played in a while, kept a clean sheet with uh, two new players in the side and with a change of formation and won one nil. Um, can't ask for much more. Well, Gary Gary Mills used to say one nil is the perfect result, didn't he? Mm. That was uh... Gary Mills used to say. Um, but to be honest, with, uh, Blair Adams and Dylan Morse, yeah, they played really well. Um, well, I thought Danny Greenfield had a good game as well. Uh, Kyle Griffiths had one much better game. Uh, and if uh, I'm looking at that, I bet that guy's the fullback wished he'd just pulled because uh, he went to grab him and then backed off. I bet he wished he'd dragged uh, Callum Griffiths down because yeah. that ball in was fantastic. Well, say the, the guys they lost their shape when they made the substitutions. They got uh, they brought off. Um, I think it was the left wing back. I think it was, and uh, they changed it all around and just lost their shape. Um, and we obviously grew into the game in the later stages, and you know we got our rewards kept going away. And um, but uh, hang on, we've got a message here. This one's from Tivery. I've been really critical uh, recently, but. Uh, but we had a game, people worked hard and uh, we got ahead and we won. And as I say, we, we can't ask for much more, but we looked good in, in spells in that game and we rid our luck um, at times. But also as well, we had that man, Monty, back in goal for the first time in quite a few weeks. And he pulled off this amazing uh, triple save in a few seconds. Set pieces now because that threw in is like a set piece, isn't it? Well, Parsons puts the ball in there and headed off the bar. What and it was, save. I think, it's oh, a lovely save there from the feet from Montgomery. It's still not cleared yet. Another fantastic save by Montgomery down to his left. And wow, that was some reaction saves from James Montgomery. Outstanding from Montgomery. At least three saves in there that you could put in the very, very top bracket. Um, what I would say is Gateshead absolutely all over the place at the back there. And that'll be a major concern against the a big physical Geisley side. Someone needs to take control at the back, uh, whether it is Alex Nicholson as the, the experienced one in that back. Well, amazing. Superman. Amazing reaction saves. And, you know, we talk about the perfect hat-trick, you know, left foot, right foot, header. Well, that was <laughs> a combination of saves. It was left hand, right hand and foot, wasn't it? You can't do much more than that. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. Um Sadly for for me, I don't know what it was like for everybody else when that the trio saves happened. My my uh, my stream just went all the pot. It was just it was just all broken up. So I didn't really see that until I'd actually seen the highlights. But yeah. uh, oh, what what a save, what three fantastic saves and that's what Monty gives you. And he's a he's a very good keeper. And no one ever doubt it. Um, I thought young Harrison Mill, when he stepped in, he done really well as well. Yeah, he made a couple of mistakes, but he's a young kid. 
And now you've got Rob Elliott in the background helping them out. Yeah, That's he was, only uh, going to be a good thing for them. They're uh, helping the coaching staff on Saturday. Yeah. So I bet he was impressed with that that triple save. Um, it was just it was it was just fantastic. Um, and let was see if any, if anyone could uh, message in and uh, they were watching the stream on Saturday if they had any trouble with uh, that unless it was just your internet and just you had a dip in uh, the broadband which made it stutter for you. But uh, yeah, send in some messages. Um, we've got uh, that all afternoon, Dave. Did it? I don't know if it was the internet and the weather. I, d- I don't know. Well, we've got uh, all of it is put evening, lads. Norway calling. Great to see you. Excited to hear Mr. Carter soon. Can't wait. Uh, so there we <laughs> go. Um, you can do as all of it is done. Just message below the video, whether it be on the Facebook or in the chat and on um, the live messages on uh, YouTube. And also, if you can see just below us here. There we go. Uh, like the page and subscribe as well because it helps us help to reach more people. Um, that's what we want to do. We want to have more people uh, listening. Share it with your friends and hopefully we can get more and more people uh, interacting and talking to us as Roger Ely has done. And he's put, I think we missed Hunter, particularly in the first half. I think we missed his height in midfield, um, just sitting in front of the back, uh, the back, uh, was back four on Saturday. Um, but Greenfield did very well. He, he broke up play and he, he helped distribute the ball well. Um, I think that's why me and uh, or myself and Mark Crivers picked him out of our man of the match. Uh, but obviously it went to uh, Dylan Morse from the official one. But yeah, there were, there were some good performances all around the pitch. But I, I was, I'll be looking forward to seeing Hunter back on the side myself. I think he's grown into that position, like the half-back just in front of the... The back three or back four, and um, he breaks up play, and uh, he's great in the air as well. He's 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 come on really well. Um, I've been very impressed with Jack on all, all season. Um, he's he just he does the dirty work, and he's one of them that is he's not one of the, the more glamorous players, so to speak, and he, he just does his job and does it well, yeah. and. And that that, 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 year, continue. that year away at Blythe, he's um he's definitely matured as a player. Um and you know, remember he was just a young lad when he came to us that's uh, in yeah. his first spell. He had been released from under twenty three football and he was getting his first taste of uh, professional Men. uh, professional men's football. Um and you know, he's he's went away, experienced different things at Blythe, different dressing room, different culture, part time football. He's come back to full-time football, and um, I think we're reaping the benefits of someone that's got a bit more experience underneath him now. Oh, definitely. I mean, you, you're starting to see why why he was captain at the in, in Newcastle's youth team. Um, I've been very, very impressed. Um, oh, there's, I'm running out of superlatives. If safe for the lad, I'm, I'm, he's he's been really good. I, I tell that and say he's been really, really good. He really has. And um, just before we bring in our guest, uh, Tony Carter, he's about to join us. Um, you may have seen on Gator's social media, there was a link to go to um, a vote. And this is the strips that um, are on offer or to be voted for for next season. And um, I, I'm a fan of uh, the home strip A and away strip A. I like both. I, like, I both like the checks, but I, I wouldn't be unhappy with any of those. I like I like both both bees, but I'm slightly disappointed because I wanted to stay with the uh, I want to stay the half and half shirt. Uh, yeah, I thought I'm gonna try and I be on the half and half shirt would be here to stay. Yeah, a bit like have it as our identity, like Blackburn Rovers or something like that, you know, and have it as. But um, so we are going to be joined by the man, the myth, the mouth, Tony Carter. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Hello. 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 Hey, Hello. Hey. Yeah, nice to see you. Chin, chin. <laughs> Look, uh... <laughs> it's what it's what I'm expecting. Join Jin, don't worry. Oh, well, that's uh... all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. Hi, <laughs> all about have a stay in you, son. Same to you, Michael. Same to you, my friend. Yeah. Um <laughs> I'll say, um, we, we were talking to Graham Lee earlier on. I don't know if you've seen it. We we're talking about obviously about his dad. Ah, yeah. He was yes. dementia. And um Obviously, you were there with Mickey because um, he's, a, he's got a few more years on me. But uh, in his first stint, what, what were your memories of Tony Lee, the manager? In his first stint, Dave, um, we had no money. Signed Billy Saint Thonia. Uh, 
didn't play attractive football, but had some decent players. I mean, you probably love Charlie Butler. I like Charlie Butler. You got you got your goals. You know what he's about. Um, yeah, he's had the yeah. heart of a pig. Yeah, but that's a, <laughs> that's about right. Um, in his first spell, very lucky to lose his job, obviously, to make his friend. He was unfortunately so from dementia as well. Obviously, you know, yeah. what I mean, don't you, Mega? Um, yeah. Second second spell yet again. Very lucky. He had two spells against the manager. Pop, actually, popular with the fans. Very popular with the fans. But uh, unlucky. Popular. Yeah, yeah. Nice man. Had time time for the fans off the pitch. You know, he speak to you. He wouldn't hold back. Um, just very lucky in both spells. And I've got good fun memories of the man as manager. You know, honestly, look, you know, great bloke. Um. You know, if you look at the team that actually went up under Ian Bogey, a lot of them players he brought in, you know, and a lot of them players he seemed a jealous squad for that, you know. Um, so he did put the foundations, foundation. yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely, definitely, you know. Um, I just think as a manager, he was looking in two spells, you know, Adam in two spells, and well, I, I think there wasn't one fa- fan glad to see him go in both spells, both fans, I mean, both spells, both the fans were good. I was, Mickey was, you know. Yeah, as I say, as, um, as I say yeah. just a lovely man. Um, obviously, if anyone that met him will, will probably echo those statements. But uh, as I say, we were talking before, we mentioned about when we are at Fleetwood and I think we were losing. <laughs> and he's going around asking what the chef went to school. Hey, I think it was a funny sub for Doncaster, wasn't he? Yeah, and he says, uh, I mean, we got, I lost that game 1 0. Um, it's a game we should have won, actually. Um, Davy Southern got clouted in the face. Uh, should have a penny, but anyway, got a long story short. We're losing the game. He was asking everybody, How was it? What's a Doncaster score at half time? Uh, yeah. it's, it's <laughs> I remember on the way down, I mean, obviously, Davy on the bus as well, uh, on the way down to Blackpool. I mean, Derek Bell put with some, and the Diggsy put in bloody hell, honestly. Ampleyville Horror, honestly. <laughs> honestly. You've heard of the Blackpool's dungeons? I think we stayed in them. Oh, um, yeah. And all the way down, all, all he was interested is even on the way back. You'd have to have had a great weekend, lost the game. He was running the book on the way back on the Premiership games. He was just Aye. obsessed with betting. Um, but he was great. Laugh. That, that, that particular weekend, I just remember Craig Baxter, Baxter, young kid. You know, he'd been with a few games. Uh, went up and down the hallways, keeping waiting about two o'clock in the morning with two cans of Fosters, one each. And it was a it was a trip it was a trip from hell, but it was a good trip for that made sense. Um, a took, lot of yeah, yeah. We took we took our ways and girlfriends and by God, I, I got the honeymoon suite. Christ oh mate, if that was a honeymoon suite, bloody <laughs> hell. Um, <laughs> but uh, honestly, um it, it, it just a fun weekend, it really was. But that's what the man was like. You know, he had he, he took the fans on the bus, he had time with the fans, and uh, you know, honestly, I, I, I was good when he actually lost his job actually at Gate in the in the second absolutely good because you could see. The team was coming together. He signed some players that let him down, yeah. I think. You know, ex-pros like Ian Clark, I thought, let him down. Player, you know, good, solid players in that days. We got them. Team made past their best. But he did have the makings. Like I say, the backstars and that. So he did have the makings of some, you know, players that would go on. to know what to do well for the club, you know. So I, and the foundation was laid by him, you know. Certainly uh, did. It's, um, but, uh, see, Tony, it, uh, we've talked about current dances. I think you watched I, your stream on Saturday, didn't you? Yeah, I'm just having a drink of water, sorry. Yeah, that was my first. I was a stream virgin. Uh, I watched the live stream, very impressed actually, because I'll be honest with you, I don't like watching streams. I like, I, you know, I, I like being there, or I'm not a posh you on Sky or BT, but I just, I just I don't seem like the quality streams. Very, very surprised. B- you know, bought it for the first time ever. Um, I mean, I've, I get the, as you know, Dave, me and your Eagles fans, I get the Eagles streams, I get the quotes from them. I don't actually watch the games because I, I just, I'm not a fan of sitting with, you know, like on a laptop, but obviously yeah, that's how thick I am. I didn't realize I could put on my bloody telly, did I? <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, which I didn't know, but really enjoyed it. Yeah, what, what, a fa- what a family afternoon, the whole family watching the game, and it was, uh, it was bittersweet like that. Uh, it, to actually score a winner in the last minute or injury time instead of conceding. Yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, it was good. Yeah. I enjoyed it, yeah. Different, wasn't it? Uh, the, that, the, to be scoring that, the late one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I tell you, it, made, it made the night more enjoyable. I think. I think that's you know. I think that's pretty why I still that late celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you um, need an excuse, do you? <laughs> nah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> no, not, 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 not particularly. Um, but no, I enjoy it. What, I'll, really, I'll really quick, uh, but a quick story. What? Uh, Tony Lee told me years ago when we come back from a game. It was on about Neil Granigham. Neil Granigham, yeah, yeah. Neil yeah. Granigham, yeah. They always used to come back overweight from pre-season and apparently they'd been given these regimes. And t- this is Tony Lee telling us and he says, they've all been given a fitness regime in this first year pre-season. They get on the scales. 
And he looked at the scales. He says, bloody hell, Grana, you're our weight again. And he meant to say to him, what's the lowest plane weight you've ever been? Instead, he said, what's the lightest you've ever been? And Grana went 7.3 ounces. <laughs> <laughs> That was the man. That was the man of the team. Man. He's brilliant, honestly. Brilliant manager. Honestly, honestly, I was really, really, really good at um, Obviously, when he left the second, I was good at the first time. Obviously, to be replaced by you know, you know, by like Tommy Casty, who was, he was commercial commercial manager at the time. Mickey, is that right? He was yeah, commercial he was manager. Commercial manager. Yeah, yeah. And then a few, few. Obviously, you know, I mean, don't get me wrong. Tommy Casty had he, he took we had a good memory at Wickham Wanderers in the in the FA Trophy type thing, you know. And um, but you know, I I, don't, I never took it. Obviously, Cassidy. I think because he got we got with the league. I think that in, until Colin came along, and then obviously Colin left. We got another good manager in Tony Lee again. Yes, yeah, down the line. It's you know, look, basically local lads, local lads who know the non-league scene and now you know. I mean, you've got to understand in the first spell when he, even in the sec, you know, even in the second spell when money was a bit tight, you always seen to find a gem from non-league football in the northeast. Tony Lee, you know, look at his record at Whitby, and how was he at Whitby? You know, what I mean, his record was second and none there. You know, great manager, absolutely great manager. Greg Solly has sent this message, but agreed lad, and half it's uh, waited for years for it to come back. Shame it was just for one season. It would be nice Good if it's come back and it would be like be our identity, really. It would be nice because mm. um yeah, but as I say we'll we'll find out the, the results of the vote. I'd imagine the next I'm couple most- of- I must admit, so you know, like, I agree with make. I, I'm good at like with. I mean, I kind of, I don't know, it took four for years to get that, that strip back, and then I'm sh- shocked. I'm shocked. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's one after one season. Technically, nobody's seen it, the team actually. Apart from yourself, commentating, Dave, nobody's seen that team play in the flesh for that strip, and it might not be, and that's going to be the shame because long, long, my standing fans, like me, myself, have always wanted to see that strip back on the pitch at the international stadium, the competitive game. We're not going to get a chance. I know it's. Know? A- it's a real shame, but obviously we're talking about going to see football this season. It looks like that's not going to happen. Nah, it's not going to happen. We were talking before, there was a, a statement put out by the National League that they have um, contacted the clubs. Uh, they had a league meeting yesterday. They had meetings with the clubs today. There was a statement put out about an hour and a, maybe two hours ago that there was three options on the table or three discussion points. One being that the clubs take a loan, the league takes a loan, or we end the season now. now can't see many clubs taking the loan. No one wants to get into that state. No, they're not going to do that. The league, do that. the league itself is not a big money generator because the TV rates are minimal. The sponsorship isn't that big. And the league to get into debt is probably the high end to nothing. And to end the season, it it seems like the the most likely place at the moment, doesn't it? I think it's going to happen. It's, it's you know, let, let's let's be fair. Uh, look, look at us yesterday. And uh, look at Blythe. Two teams were out of the game. We should have been playing. Why well, couldn't we get that fixed one? I just think teams now are going to resign themselves to why have more expense, you know, let's be fair, injuries, uh, co- paying for COVID tests. I, I think it's, I think, yet again, I think Blythe, unfortunately, she's going to steal again by default, um, set, which is unbelievable. Saying that, I mean, they don't want to be in the league, obviously, so it's, you know, it's worth saying that, you know, uh, will it take vol- relegation? You tell me, I don't know. They can't afford to play at this level, so it's a yeah. hard... It, it, sadly, I think we're going to see a lot of clubs maybe a little bit lower down the pyramid that will actually go. Um, we've seen a couple go in Wales yep. think, earlier in the season. I think there's been one or two. I mean, was it Jersey had to actually, or Guernsey, one of the two, had to pull out when they eventually got into the league. Guernsey, Guernsey. Um, you know, hopefully they get to go back in next year without any restrictions. But it, it's really, it, it's it's hammering football really at this level. It's it's going to kill off some clubs. It, it will happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, I, I, the, the thing about the good thing about gating is, it, and you know, I, you know, I, I, not that I know anything, but it's been, it has been run at the minute very well by the people who took over the club, the, the trust, the people that's involved. It, it is well run. There's, there's no immediate financial worries there, which I know of. Um, so we're we're in a strong position in fairness as a club. Um, is it advisable to finish the league now? It probably is, to be honest with you. It probably is. You know, it really is. Uh, I don't think clubs should take loans. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in a business now. I haven't took any loans off the government, bounce back loans, anything like that. I've worked through it now. I mean, and I, I wouldn't, because it has got to be paid back. Remember, a loan is a loan. It's got mm-hmm. to be paid back. It doesn't have to low interest rates, etc. And, and, XYZ. And if, we, if we look at the bigger picture today as well, we've had nearly 2,000 deaths today. Um, mm-hmm. And to, for people to be complaining, or to, you know, saying, well, we're not going to get to the game or whatever, I think we just got to look at it and say, well, look, we're just going to have to put it. You know, yeah, yeah. To say, well, that's it this season. If if it is the case, we don't know what the league's gonna come up with, depending on what the clubs say. I, but 
be honest with you, sorry, I said I do think the league should make the league should take it up the club's hands. It's all for some clubs because some clubs want to remain playing, some don't. I mean, I think we want to remain playing, but look at look at Dortmund. Eleven eleven games have played this season. They're not going to catch up. There's no way they're going to catch up. Take the financial burden off them now. Don't let them travel a, a game two weeks' time. It's, it'll cost a thousands of pounds for you know for COVID testing for for expense. I did, see, I did see one. Uh post on Twitter from one of the um, uh, non-league journalists that apparently this weekend's fixtures are going to go ahead yeah. and next midweek's fixtures will go ahead. The ones that can, that aren't weather yeah. affected, COVID affected. But after that, it's you know, up in the air completely. I do I do think the league should take a stance. The league should they're put it in the club's hands. Okay, I can understand that. They're all put in the club's hands, but some clubs... We we'll want to play on because technically there's promotion involved and there's relegation involved. Well, yeah. there's not so much relegation, begging pardon, there's promotion involved. I just think the league should make a stance and take it out to, out of the hands. I really, really do, you know? Yeah. And um, obviously, we've got Luke Heed FC there. He's just put, well, the, if the end of the season, it wouldn't be fair for top of the table, Gloucester, after having an amazing run in the league. Yeah, I get it. But, I, 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 yeah, I get that, Dave, but the problem you've got is it's. it's I mean, look at Chester. They, they've got players effectively playing for nothing. They're sitting mm. second in the league. And for them, it's a real bittersweet because they'll not want to take a, a loan out, but they'd love to be able to finish the season the way that, the way they are at the moment. And that's it, horrendous for them. Double-edged sword, Dave. It's a double-edged sword, unfortunately. Uh, I just do think it's very easy for the league to say the club's got to make the decision. I think it's the other way around. The league yeah. run the league. They're, they're in charge of the league. They've got to make the decision. Take it up the club's hands. Simple as that. Well, and then, it, you know. They bottled yeah, it last season. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. bottled it last season. So what makes you going to think they're going to do it this season? Yeah. If you're going to null and void this, this season, completely null and void it. Because I, I didn't want to go through the same crap we went through with points per game and elite sports and non-league games and crap like that. Yeah. If, if, so it, if it means tough for Gloucester or York or whoever, tough. That's it. End of. See, the problem is with the conference in Germany, you think about it, they've got the BT sports, you know, they've got the BT sports deal. So obviously the Premier League clubs obviously get that little bit more TV exposure. They, they want to finish the season because it is money in their little bit little bit more money in their pot. So if obviously if if they finish the season, they'll stay in the league. So it, it is would be unfair in Gloucester, but where where do you draw the line? What's fair and what's unfair? Where do you actually stop? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, that, that's I mean, gonna, every team's gonna have a positive and a negative to any any outcome. Um mm -hmm. it's but as I say, if you just blank it across, either end it or I, I don't know if there's another option. Maybe if there's, say, if there's 10 teams or eight teams want to continue playing, do they have a, like a, a little mini league to end the season in the playoffs? I, it, it, but then again, someone could say, well, that's not fair. If we had a known that option was on the table, it, there's so many permutations. You just don't know. What's oh, it's a, me it's a mess, it's a mess yeah. Dave, but. But I still think the league should take it out of the club's hands. Don't you know? Don't put it in the the club should never see on this. As far as I'm concerned, they shouldn't anyway. I'll you know? is put if the season if we end the season, what's going to happen to players' contracts? Uh, they would have to be paid up. I would imagine they've signed the contract. Uh, clubs would have to find the shortfall of that. Um, regardless, um, you would think. I, I, I would imagine so. Um, the DCM weren't clear, and the league took uh, a huge gamble. Well. The, the things that came out was it was it a week before the season started or three three days before the season was to start where they went well no you, there is going to be cover for you to be able to play this season and obviously I think everyone thought that they were going to have uh, fans back in by December obviously COVID took a, a nose dive on on those plans and it's it's like you said before how many how many people can take out loans or how many freebies can you give out to certain businesses when it's not an essential business football yes it's nice to have around but why should the government have to fork out millions or you know but then again the FA is sitting on a lot of money so is FIFA FIFA is sitting on a lot of money and you know you've got to point the finger somewhere and the FA and the leagues I think are massively at fault here. David can only take a loan out as well you know I mean let's be fair how many clubs what assets have they got. I mean, technically, I mean, I mean, obviously, the, 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 the banks are, are, are banks or what are they, obviously, are the loans going to come from the from the FAs, you see, or are the loans going to come from banks? The problem you've got with bank loans at the minute is that people would rather invest, let's be fair, in business, mm -hmm. employing people in a football club. I did read you somewhere know? said they were going to be interest free loans, completely interest free loans, but still, that's even though it's interest free. 
Yeah, yeah. he's still got paid back. I mean, are these loans? Did they, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how these loans are going to work with with a, with a f- football. I've got no idea. But would, is there a loan on an asset? What asset have most clubs got? They rent, they rent their grounds. They, they, you know, where, where 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 would they? How would they get the loans? I mean, I, you know, normally when you take a loan out, you've got to, you've got to have some kind of asset you can put against. You know, and what what can you put against the football club? Oh, Interest free or not? Or is M loans coming from banks? Or is M loans going to come from the FAA? Is UCA whatever? I just think it's. A, I think. Forget the loans, clubs should just be. Uh, to me, this is my opinion. Forget end the season now, have less expense for the clubs, and just try to get back on the camp. Yeah, well, John Laverick has actually made a good point there. I forgot about the furlough scheme is still in play. And it would it, cover. It, it, it's it, it's still in play, Dave. The furlough scheme. I do believe when gated players aren't playing, technically they can be furloughed in between games because technically the training doesn't class as work. If that makes sense, I think most yeah. clubs are that. And he is right what he says about the furlough scheme. But then again. You know how, how how long they got these players. You can't. That means if you fail to turn somebody, you, how you got to keep them for next season if you don't want them to a certain length of time. It's you know, it's just I don't know. I just think it's the, the season should end and just start again next year. That's that's just my personal view on it. It's just it's just a right royal mess. It's the only way you can really definitely. Really. I mean, we, obviously, um, friend of the podcast and uh, who used to work at the club, Dom Skur, he put up um, an article. Hearing that Hartlepool will would would not want to take out any loans, you know, what I mean, they're, they're riding mm-hmm. high at the moment. They'd want to see the season out, but financially, they're a mess still. They're not, they're not, you know, not completely secure yeah. in a great season. But would they want to risk that on the chance of not going up and then having that millstone round the neck? <laughs> what do you could say? Yeah, you know, it's uh, we've got to make a sticky selling behind us. As he, oh, we can, we can say hello. Um, Stuart Minnis has put, hello, Tony Carter. How's you? I used to do the uh, Captain Thunder mascot, the Gates of Games. He did, he did. I'm good. Thanks, Stuart, yourself. Um, you know, um, I hope we get back to Thunder. I hope uh, that's nothing. We, we were supposed to be back at rugby in February. That looks like it's been put on hold as well, you know. Uh, and they've heavily invested in players. It's the whole sports a mess at the minute, you know. It's, it's, I just think all sports at elite levels should just, or on our level to just stop now and just basically, you know, don't spend any more money on trying to get promotion on something you might not get. As I, as I say, you, I, I think you'll have, obviously you still have promotion in this league with, if, if it continued, obviously, with the Premier, the North and the South. But obviously, anything below, you know, it's a waste of time, you know. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, uh, Tony, thank you very much for joining us. It's been a, a pleasure. And uh, <laughs> I, pleasure I to see you again, I've never seen you with donkeys. I know, I know. I've been keeping myself fit, doing a jog every day, keeping off the ale. Well, this is water, obviously. Um, I know. Anyone I've got you on Facebook. It's only because the pub's shut. <laughs> oh, no, it's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> I bet you're shaking like a shitting dog. <laughs> <laughs> Believe it or not, not, not missing it. Not the slightest. Really? No, I'm not actually, no. no not the slightest. Uh, I'm actually doing longer hours at work. Um, doing okay. Employed more drivers, more wagons. Um been a bit quiet this month, but uh, I've put everything in the work now. To be honest with you, so working hard. Good on so, you, bud. That's Good why I've you. lost. That's why I've lost all this hair. Put weight on, and I've got all these bags. That's not from years and years of abuse on your body. That's from hard, solid work the last couple of months. <laughs> well, Tony, well, that, that's will... the lad if you actually work in, like no, Tony yeah. will go so you can abuse your body. But uh, thank you very much. See you later, Take care. Yeah. Take care, yeah. Tony. What are you doing? I will. Oops, sorry, I cut him off there by mistake. <laughs> 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 but there we go, Tony Carter. Well, as we do at the end of the show, you can be part of the show. In fact, I've put it up there like that. There you can ring the show. If you would like to speak to us, you can uh, join us. But um, yeah, just, uh, you know, it's a bit of a mess. Is the season going to continue? Hopefully. Um, but not the detriment of the club or any football club, really, to be honest. And um, everyone's safety is paramount, and that is what we want. Um, but yeah. we're just going to have to see what what the what the clubs come out and say after these uh, meetings, to be honest. And by the way, this is not knickers on the radiator. It is uh, my son's T-shirt. I've just seen it in the background there, in case anyone's thinking he's got his dirty knickers on the radiator. Oh, Calad moved in. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, man, but yeah, if you do want to ring us and talk about anything that we've talked about, of course, as well, we'll put up them. I don't know if the vote is still open or if it's closed, but these were the options for the new shirts, and uh, they're quite snazzy still. Um, of course, I think a lot of people would love to have kept the half and halves, but um, as a replacement going forward, they're, they're not too shabby. Well, B, option B reminds me of the old century kit. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like Ajax a little bit because that one was more like a solid black line down the front, wasn't it? 
Aye, and we went got relegated with that bloody thing. <laughs> yeah, it started off good that season. Three nil win. Paul Connor Aye, scoring two goals. Aye, uh, I was I was in Greece when that happened. That year, I was on holiday with the lads. Hey, well, I slid downhill when I come back. I was going to say when you come back, it it, it all went uh, tits up. Uh, well, that if you're <laughs> Yeah, uh, if y'all just join us, um, we'd like you to know that you can follow us on Twitter as well for any notifications and we share any news that comes out of the club as well at heat underscore army. So we'd love you to do that. Uh, follow us and uh, as we said before, like and subscribe, like the Facebook page, share us as well when we're on or after uh, with any friends that you know that go to the gates of game. We'd love to have them involved and get on the show and subscribe. And if you watch on YouTube, subscribe and help us reach that 100 followers because then if we get the 100 followers, we can change the URL name to uh, Heed Army Podcast. And um, well, Sarah Ray has put, Mickey, don't you have David's knicker on? <laughs> you don't have David's knickers on your radio today? You? All the time. Yeah. Not, ju- not just Davey Gaddis, your David's as well. <laughs> Well, what can I say? I don't wear any knickers when I go around Mickey's. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what a load of teams in the lower. Sorry, what a load of teams in the lower leagues uh, every time do after the half time uh, virtual paint one pound cash and goes into the club's kitty. Yeah, I think we'll get to do the fifty fifty draw, don't they? Um, at the moment, yeah. so we'll keep doing that. It's uh, it's great and. Um, uh, oh, the West Peterborough um, Supporters Club branch needs a short uh, a shout out. They did send a message there before. I'll try and put it on, and uh, I'll get it here. There we go. Um, greetings from West Peterborough branch. Uh, good, though we've not had a match to see uh, nearly a year now. Of course, they've taken a lot of the away games, but now uh, of all our health comes first. We only hope the FA etc. stump up the to help uh, tier five clubs. Uh, money wise, uh, keep the podcast, it's great for us exiles. Well, we will, we'll keep it going, don't worry. Shout out, uh, the fellow West Posh uh, member, uh, Bob Clancy. So, yeah, thank you very much yeah. for the message there. And um, we've got a message from Sam Penalties, but uh, tough times for everyone at the moment. I think the season will be ended at uh, as some teams like York have been badly affected by COVID and only played 12 games. Uh, main thing is everyone is safe and well, yeah. I'm, I, even Blythe, I mean, you know, we don't like them. They're the rivals, of course, but they've been absolutely hammered um, by COVID uh, positive tests. And um, it, it's not great. And it, it's, it doesn't matter if the rivals are not, if they kind of get the games on, what's the point in you know doing this? And especially if the way money is and the funding and grants isn't uh, coming, then it's, 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 not really wise is it but we want to hear, if we've got about seven minutes left we'd love to hear from you go on send us a uh, give us a ring on there we're waiting for you to get in contact with the show we had uh, dave allen and david ray ring us last week so if you do want to get involved please do and our next show is our 300th show i don't know exactly when it'll be um hopefully it'll be next week we want to try and arrange and try and get some big guests on for the 300th show so it might be later on in the week next week we want to try and you know get some uh, people on or some video messages and stuff just to because reaching 300 broadcasts it's um it's been quite good it, in the past we we had our hundredth broadcast from the three tons it was great uh, we had even had a cake uh he done right. cake which was great yeah, from yeah. courtesy of trish wilson yeah so um be nice to have uh some kind of celebration we even have a paint on air um and then we can start the obscenities um but yeah we do <laughs> start a fight yeah we'll start a fight but uh, we do want Virtual you to yeah, we want you to get involved. Um, remember, please do share the show. Um, that's what we always want to do. But we also say as well, because we're not uh, uh, officially uh, anyway with the football club. This is an official fans podcast, but we do work closely with them. And we would like you to follow their social media and uh, the affiliates as well that are linked to the club. So please do follow the Gated FC social media accounts or on all platforms. Same with the Gated Soul, and you'll find out anything that's coming out uh, from them. They've done some great things. And the Gated Foundation, more importantly at the moment, we've talked about mental health a lot over the last few weeks. And uh, Gated FC ladies as well, you'll see that Alicia put up a message um, yesterday um, saying that their, their DMs are always open as well for anyone that's struggling during these times because it is hard. It's it's not great at the moment. There doesn't seem to be much of a light at the end of the tunnel and our escape in football, um, you know, whether it be in streams or, you know, what, talking about it, 
it looks like it could be coming to an end. Hopefully not, fingers crossed. But um, that's just the way it is. It's extremely sad if the season ends, but you can understand why. And it'll break my heart to see the season ended. It really it, would. I mean, you're going to go eight months without football, really, aren't you? Um, by the looks of it, um, like at the best case, <laughs> at the best case scenario. Um, so, as I say, we just go fingers crossed. Uh, you know, the, the the powers that be can help the clubs, or if not, we safeguard the clubs and the leagues to be able to play in the future because that's that's the most important thing at the end of the day. Um, you know, we've got to really. We're lucky we've had a bit of football this year. You look at the leagues below, their seasons have gone. Uh, the last two seasons count for nothing, which is uh, heartbreaking, really. And uh, we've got Kian Weirs has sent a message. Could you get people following the Academy social media platforms too? Uh, get to have the Academy. Yes, but please do. Sorry, we didn't mention that. Um, so uh, please uh, follow all of theirs as well. And also as well, you may see on Facebook, uh, um, the Gated under, 80, under 16s as well. They do a lot of social media things. So follow them uh, on uh, all social media platforms. That's what it's all about. But uh, yeah, so it looks like we aren't going to get any calls um, at the minute. So that's all right. But um, massive thank you to Graham Lee. Uh, it was lovely for him to come on and talk about his dad. Um, he's you know, lovely bloke, and um, please do share this with anyone that was maybe a Gated fan back in the day, and uh, be nice just to just you know share the stories and hopefully get more people talking. And um, we that you know Tony is very comfortable and uh, you know continues to have a nice uh, standard of life um, with his with his dementia. That's all you can ask for, really. Um, yeah, yeah it's, it's it's sad, and I'm glad Graham's come on and spoke well of him and he's not going to speak ill of his dad obviously but you know what I mean it's just it's just nice to hear uh, about Tony and it's, oh, it, be, it means a lot to me Tony Lee well uh, you know now we're blessed especially in non-league even down to your, your 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 northern league level you've got social media videos going up interviews everything is recorded now for you know for history and mm. If we don't talk about some of the things from 20 years ago and, and, and before, that's gone. Well, you know, the, the podcast is also here to record history. You know, we, we hear stories. I mean, unfortunately, we lost um, Mick Thornton. We, we managed to get him on for a couple of stories. He would still be uh, very much part of the furniture on the podcast as a guest throughout the season. You know, we've lost that history. Um, and we want to try and preserve history now for fans in the future because hopefully this will be on YouTube forever. Um and people can, you know, go back and see what was happening, what the fans were saying at the time when they look back at the history of their club. So, how how funny was that? Pretty sure when we had done the interview oh, with me. Oh, oh, some oh, stories. I, it's true what they say about milkmen. Christ, he had some stamina. As <laughs> um, he says, he's make he's make good stuff with a shilling for it. If he's seen the hem of a ninety, absolutely <laughs> classic line. <that. laughs> Well, absolutely um, fantastic. Certainly is uh, gone, but not forgotten, Mick Thornton. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll wrap it up there. As a big thank you to Graham Lee. Thank you to Tony Carter as well. And um, let's see, as ever, share the podcast. Um, and we'll be back next week. Um, either it'll either be Wednesday or Friday, depending on what we can get lined up for the three hundredth show. Because uh, yeah. we'll try do a little celebration and um, you know get things uh, have a jolly show because hopefully we'll have some jolly things to talk about we'll see what happens with the league as we mentioned in, yeah, earlier hopefully on hopefully it would be a preview of the Alfred and game David it would be nice it would be nice wouldn't it um, if we can do that but uh, Mickey thank you as ever uh, yeah, we've, we've had oh, a decent pleasure. Yeah. and um, well hopefully we'll yeah. uh, have a big show lined up next week and Let's see if the game goes ahead against Darlington uh, on the 26th. We'll hopefully have that to talk about as well. And uh, yeah, so fantastic. And uh, well, everyone, thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Bye. Take care.